At times, we all experience difficult situations that can bring us to our lowest point. Whether it's a financial crisis or trouble in our relationships, everything we hold dear can seem to slip away in an instant. These storms of life can strike anyone, regardless of their faith or beliefs. When we face these storms, it's easy to question God and become angry with Him for not shielding us from harm. However, the truth is that God doesn't always shield us from difficult circumstances. In the story of Job, we see that God allowed the devil to test Job's faithfulness, despite Job being a righteous man. Through this trial, Job never lost his trust in God and was ultimately blessed with even more than he had before. God got supreme power and is constantly observing us even if we can't see it. He never sleeps nor slumbers and is aware of every situation that we face. While we may not comprehend the reason behind difficult moments, we can be assured that the Almighty God is alongside us, leading us through each tempest. He is well aware of what is going on. You may ask, why will God allow me to go through these storms? You may ask if God loves me, why would he allow this to happen to me? The truth is, most times, love makes difficult decisions. Your child may never want to go to school or try something good, but as a parent, it is your responsibility to make them do it. Most times they cry and are genuinely hurt, but as a parent, you know that it doesn't matter now because they're going to get over it. You know they will because you once went through that and others also went through that and others will still go through that. This is the same with God. He isn't doing things because He wants to hurt you, but because He knows what is best for you. Life is a lot like schooling. There is a period of learning and then there is a period of examination. Storms happening in life is a lot like our examinations. What we do with this storm will determine whether or not we will move to the next level. If we don't pass our grade 6 examinations, we do not get to go to grade 7. This is what happens in life. God wants us to move to the next level. So sometimes, He allows these storms to come our way. Sometimes, these storms may come as a mistake that we have made, but other times, there is absolutely no reason why these storms are present. We should remember that God's mercy and grace are available in these situations. There are so many people God has rescued from the storms of life. We should never get discouraged or think that God cannot help us. We should always remember that a storm is like an examination and after we pass the examination, we will get more blessings as a reward. Just like normal examinations, we need to prepare to pass these life storms. The thing is, God doesn't just rescue. He needs our participation to intercede in our situation. This is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever, which is why we pray. Unbelievers can be likened to unserious students who refuse to prepare for their examinations correctly. They can choose to cheat, bribe, or use pills to aid their process. Believers are like serious students who always prepare for their examinations. We must realize that God is 100% love and love doesn't force. You must invite God into your situation if you want Him to help you. It is a partnership with God. He plays His role, but we must also play our role if we want Him to act. This is why many believers don't get what they desire. They think God is like a genie where they wish for things to happen, and then it happens. It's worth remembering that storms come and go, but we emerge stronger and more knowledgeable. These challenging moments often provide opportunities for new blessings. Rather than questioning or becoming angry with the divine during these trying times, 
We should rely on Him and trust His plan. Pray for direction and resilience and rely on our supportive loved ones. We must remember that God cares. He truly cares for us and wants the best for us. Though we may not always comprehend the reason for our struggles, we should trust that we are not alone and God is directing us towards a brighter future. There is a reason why God is called a king and why heaven is referred to as a kingdom. This is because rules and regulations guide God in his kingdom, termed the mysteries of the kingdom. One of the reasons that Jesus came to earth is to teach us these mysteries. Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them for 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God, God's will and desire to rescue us from these storms. That's the first thing we need to know. Jesus, when he was teaching, said to people, If you being evil can give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give good gifts to those who ask? Also, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, God has good plans for us. These plans will give us a good future, so we need to know that God doesn't want us to suffer, nor is he glorified in our suffering. The second thing we need to know is that from Genesis to Revelation, we see that certain things that we do bring about certain results. So for God to rescue us from the storms of life, we must also be willing to do certain things to come out of it. Let's use Hannah as an example. Hannah wanted a child after being barren for some time. She cried. Her husband comforted her and she went for Shiloh every year, but none of these things brought a child to her. We don't know how many more things she did, but the Bible recorded that whatever she did wasn't working. But after one fateful period, Hannah decided to do something different. She was tired of her storm, so she went to Shiloh as usual. But this time around, she did something different. She prayed and made a vow to God. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11 says, And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son that I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. After this vow, she kept praying unusually. She prayed so much that even the priest Eli thought she was drunk. He approached her and asked why she was drunk in God's presence, but she replied that she wasn't drunk, but was in anguish because of her childlessness. And then Eli prayed for her, and Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to Samuel. God finally rescued Hannah, but she played her part. She did something different that she didn't do before. Hannah wasn't the cause of her problem, but there wasn't a time that she didn't hold on to God, and eventually God rescued her. It's essential to be open to change during life storms. This requires action on our part, seeking divine guidance and yielding to his plan. Although God may use struggles to shape us, we must cooperate with him in that process. Understanding the lessons we can learn through these tests and trusting he will use our struggles for good and glory is key. Thus, when facing difficulties, we need to seek God's direction, adapt to change, and trust in his love for us. By doing so, we can emerge from the storm with a deeper appreciation of his grace and purpose for our lives. Remembering that he uses every trial to refine our character and bring about good is crucial. Another example of someone God rescued is Jonah. Jonah was disobedient to God and was punished by God for his disobedience. Every time we disobey, 
we will always get the corresponding punishment. It is a law that governs the world. God sent Jonah to preach destruction against Nineveh because of their wicked actions. But Jonah refused and decided to run away from God. He took a ship to Tarshish, but God sent a storm against them. And for everyone to be safe, they had to throw Jonah out of the ship. God then sent a fish to swallow Jonah, and he stayed there for three days and three nights. While Jonah was in the belly of the fish, he realized that he was in a storm, and then he prayed to God. He didn't pray any prayer. Instead, he prayed a prayer of distress. He recognized his troubles and, more importantly, God's ability to save him. After he prayed, God delivered him. He accepted God's dominion and ability to save him from perilous weather. Jonah's account illustrates that, in humility, God will always pardon and protect us if we turn to him. When we similarly face moments of turmoil, prayer to God should be our course, seeking his direction and assistance. As Jonah did, we must confess our faults and request absolution. We must entrust ourselves to God, who yearns to redeem us from our afflictions if we have faith in his comprehensive vision for our existence. Sometimes, we might be the cause of our storms, but we shouldn't wallow in self-pity, in condemnation. Instead, we are supposed to ask God for mercy and rescue us. And he will, just as he did for Jonah. When you see that your prayers aren't getting answered, it means that some things are not booning done the way that they should be done. This is why we have the Bible. It's not just a storybook, but a pattern book. There is no new issue in life. There is always someone that has faced what you are currently facing. Our role is to study the Word of God and ask God to show us what to do to get out of these storms in our life. We will be surprised how quickly God can rescue us if we play our part. God's rescue may not always happen the way we want or expect it to. Instead of an instant miraculous deliverance, it may involve a process of learning, growth, and perseverance through tough times. Trusting God's timing and plan for our lives, even when it doesn't align with our own, is crucial. We can also turn to others for support and guidance during these challenging moments. Seeking encouragement, wisdom, and prayers from our church community, family, and friends can make all the difference in navigating through life storm. It is usual to encounter obstacles, hardships in our journeys, but we can feel solace in the awareness that God is always beside us. He wants to rescue us and lead us towards peace and prosperity. We can contribute to this by seeking His guidance, following His word, and trusting in His plan for our lives.